Hey, let's get started while we're waiting for more people to find their way through the traffic this morning um, and get here. Um, so uh, tonight is due um, this homework uh, 2.2, um, and then coming up on Wednesday is another one, which is 2.3. This one is kind of short. This one only has eight or nine um, problems in it, so it's not as hard as I don't think. Well, conceptually it could be, but at least in terms of calculations, I think it's not as hard as 2.2. Um, uh, and then, uh, so don't forget, we're headed toward next Monday uh, is our test uh, a week from today. So hopefully the weather will be better next Monday than it is this Monday. It couldn't be much worse, unless it's snowing maybe. Um, I wanted to um, mention... Um, uh, back to these uh, couple of problems uh, that are in the um, that 2.2 homework, um, problem 15 and 16. So that problem 16, we uh, this is one where you're trying to locate turning points, um, uh, uh, local uh, maxima and local minima on the graphs of uh, uh, functions. And then you, and then you, and then if, once you've located those, then you can um, write down the intervals where uh, the function is increasing or decreasing. Actually, that's not the problem that I had in mind. Um, so here's a version of the problem um, of this problem. Um, it's very similar, actually, to that um, that. Uh, previous example. Here's a version of this problem um, that um, is in uh, 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 someone's homework. So you're, this is problem number 15. So you might have had a slightly different uh, expression to graph uh, than this one, but, uh, uh, but you might have had exactly this one, uh, depending on how the um, um, you know, your, your particular homework assignment generated the problems. So again, it's the same question. It's, uh, you wanted to locate the coordinates of these two turning points. Obviously, there are two turning points on the graph. Um, uh, and then um, once you've uh, written down the coordinates of those two turning points, then, um, then it's easy to write down where it's increasing and where it's decreasing. But the, but the issue is the accuracy because you're asked for two decimal places of accuracy and um, and it's hard to get that correct so if you go right there to the and point at that turning point this is in Desmos uh, it says uh, the coordinates of that first turning point are minus 1.155 so minus 1.155 and then uh, the y coordinate is 3.079. So if you round that off to two decimal places, you would uh, uh, correctly round that off to minus 1.16 and then 3.08, correct? Okay. And so on this one, same thing. It's uh, the curve is symmetric. So this turning point shows as 1.155. And then the y coordinate is minus 3.079. So if you round that off to two decimal places, you would type in 1.16 uh, uh, and uh, minus 3.08, and uh, you know have every expectation that you've got the right answer. Okay. So you type that into website and submit it, and it says it's wrong. Okay. And so, uh, and of course, it doesn't give you much uh, help about what's wrong, right? So you're wondering what have I done wrong here? And the answer is, um, well. You really haven't done anything wrong. Let me show you. Um, uh, uh, when you're graphing, when you're trying to estimate turning points from graphs, see, this is kind of an issue because uh, 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 the accuracy becomes an issue. So, uh, it, and so trying to estimate it to two decimal places is really hard. So I want you to notice here, if we zoom in on this turning, this first turning point, for instance, and then, so zoom in really close, and then look at it again. Notice that it, the, actually the turning point is at, on the x-coordinate minus 1.1547. So if you round that off to two decimal places, it's minus 
okay? Uh, the y coordinate is indeed 3.08, rounded off to two decimal places. Um, but the actual uh, uh, x coordinate of that turning point rounded to two decimal places is minus 1.15. So that was the answer that WebAssign wanted to see, not minus 1.16. So see, that sort of thing can drive you nuts, right? Okay, because you're one one hundredth off. And you're just making an estimate from a graph anyway, right? So how accurate can you, um, you know, how accurate can you get this? So, um, um, so sometimes uh, accuracy from graphs is really an issue, and then it can really get frustrating sometimes on the um, uh, on the homeworks, right? When they're expecting these high levels of accuracy. Now, uh, on uh, most of the web assigned problems, um, I can set the numerical tolerance. So that if you're off by plus or minus 2%, uh, it'll still count it correct, okay? So uh, in many of the problems, that slight error would not have counted you incorrect. But for some reason on these two problems, 15 and 16, on that homework 2.2, I cannot set the numerical tolerance. I don't know, it's just not there for me to set it. So, um, so you have to get it really very, uh, you know, uh, almost exactly correct to get credit for that. Okay, so on these two problems, 15 and 16, when you're if you're working on these tonight, uh, be very careful about when you're locating these turning points. At you know, I would zoom in on the graph kind of close to to try to get it as best you can. I emailed WebAssign the tech support and asked them, uh, you know, how can I uh, work around this issue because I think that's an unfair question, uh, but they haven't responded yet, so they probably will today. So um, um, so just uh, 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 be warned about that. Now, uh, however, uh, this is a good lesson in calculus because what we're working toward um, is being able to uh, uh, exactly determine the location of these turning points uh, precisely without having to rely on the graphs, okay? So uh, uh, when we get a little bit of the calculus machinery under our belt, and we're moving toward that pretty quickly now, we'll be able to actually exactly determine where that turning point is uh, uh, to as many decimal places as we like and not have to just uh, 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 estimate it by looking at the graph, okay? So we'll be actually able to not even look at the graph at all, just use the formula and determine to as many decimal places as we like exactly where that turning point is located at, okay? So, see, this is exactly the kind of issue that calculus is designed to solve, all right? But, um, uh, but we're not quite there yet, all right? So, um, so we're going to have to, uh, you know, pay our dues a little bit here uh, 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 with some of these frustrations, and then we'll be able to appreciate better some of the power of calculus, right? Why people were uh, 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 interested in developing uh, uh, calculus, uh, so that they wouldn't have to make estimates like this and uh, be subject to uh, error, okay? Um, all right, <clears throat> so um, just a little bit there on um, those two annoying problems that annoyed us last time in class. That was problem 16, and then um, uh, this one, which was annoying someone on the homework last night, apparently, okay? Uh, because they sent me a message about it, and I had to agree with them. Uh, yeah, the problem's a little bit unfair. Okay, the the answer in the back is correct, but um, uh, not a fair problem in a way. Um, okay, uh, I want to ask you another question. This has not this is not to do with the class. Um, uh, I just want to see what your response is to this. Um, the um, uh, the university is trying to uh, work on consolidating meeting times for classes a little bit uh, so that your uh, schedule uh, can be a little bit more predictable, okay? Uh, and um, uh, so that you, it can make the rest of your life a little bit easier to manage. Uh, it, the question I had in mind was uh, if you had a consolidated time in which all of your classes would occur or most of your classes would occur, um, would it be better if that were uh, 8.30 to 1, Monday through Thursday? So 8.30 to 1, so you might have class at 8.30 to 10, 10 to 11.30, 11.30 to 1, right? Or would it be better if it were 10 to 2.30, okay? Because I know uh, maybe you don't like 
having to do 8.30 class, so, so 10 to 11.30, 11.31, and then 1 to 2.30, which is more convenient. I was thinking the 1 to 2.30 might interfere with work, all right? so people may not want to be here that late. But on the other hand, some people may say, I'd sacrifice anything to not be here at 8.30, <laughs> okay, all right? Uh, what is your feeling on that? So is 8.30 to 1 better or 10 to 2.30 better? 8.30 to 1? Does everyone say that? Huh? <laughs> so how many vote for the earlier morning? Well, raise your hand high so I can sort of get a feel there. Okay, yeah. And then a little bit later, 10 to 2.30? Okay, so about, uh, I would say 70-30. Okay, all right. So that's... that's uh, that's interesting, and I, I assume the major problem with 10 to 2.30 is work schedule. Is that correct? It's going to prevent you from going to work on time, or you just don't want to be here after 1 o'clock. <laughs> what? Is it work, or? I just don't want to be here. You just don't want to be here. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, okay, all right. All right, I'm not sure that the, uh, what the consensus is there. Um, okay. Um, all right. So last time we were um, uh, last time we were uh, 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 talking about instantaneous rates of change. Actually, we've been talking about for really that the last couple of times, and we're going to continue talking about that uh, for quite a while. So remember, the instantaneous rate of change of a curve, not a line, but a curve at a particular input number. So A here represents an input number. That's not the word A. That's a that's a variable representing a number there. R uh, remember that uh, sort of tells us something about the slope of the curve at that particular uh, input. Okay, but remember, slope of a curve is um, uh, not quite as clear a, a concept as slope of a line because slopes of curves will change uh, at different inputs. Right? Okay. So slopes of lines are steady. Right? That's uh, uh, what makes lines so comfortable to us and easy to work with. Slope of a state line is always steady, but slopes of curves are going to vary at different locations on the curve because curves have wiggles in them, right? Okay, so sometimes the slope of a curve is positive. The curve is going up. Uh, sometimes it's a very large positive number because the curve is very steep. Sometimes it's a very shallow positive number, because, uh, a very small positive number because the curve is shallow right? Uh, 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 the curve is not increasing very rapidly. On the other hand, sometimes the curve is decreasing, so the slope is negative. Sometimes it's decreasing very rapidly. Sometimes it's decreasing at a very shallow rate. So when we try to uh, talk about the slope of a curve versus the slope of a straight line, um, because slopes of curves are not steady, we have to uh, uh, discuss the slope at a particular point not uh, uh, across the entire curve, but just at a particular instant or at a particular point on the curve. And that is called the instantaneous rate of change. All right. And we've been discussing how we can uh, uh, determine the instantaneous rate of uh, change of a curve at a particular input number. Right. OK. Uh, and we denote the instantaneous rate of change by a special form of function notation. So we use function notation, the name of the function, but we put here that uh, apostrophe right above the function name uh, to indicate uh, not the output value uh, uh, that matches a particular input, but the rate of change or the instantaneous rate of change uh, of the function at that particular input. Um, by the way, uh, there's a different terminology that surrounds instantaneous rate of change. So sometimes I will uh, drop the instantaneous. I already mentioned that to you because that gets a little bit... Um, tedious to write out. That's a hard word to spell. So I'll just say rate of change. That means instantaneous rate of change. But another piece of terminology you're going to see in the homework, and I forgot to mention this last week, the instantaneous rate of change is also referred to as the derivative. All right, the derivative. So if you see derivative or instantaneous rate of change or just plain old rate of change, that those uh, uh, terms are all interchangeable, okay? Those terms are all interchangeable, all right? But remember, rate of change for a line is steady. Rate of change for a curve is not steady. Therefore, for a curve, we have to calculate the rate of change uh, at a particular input, 
a single input, and that can change from one input to the next. But for a straight line, the rate of change is steady, so it will not change from one input uh, to the next. Okay. All right, so uh, let's go back to this example and try this once more to remind ourselves how we're going to initially um, – try to get an estimate for the instantaneous rate of change. And then today I'm going to show you um, how we can start uh, moving toward doing this a little bit more efficiently. Okay. Because the first way uh, we've learned to do this is a little bit clumsy. Okay. And uh, uh, you will understand that it's not going to work in all circumstances. So today we'll start learning how uh, uh, alternative methods, uh, 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 more powerful methods actually for determining the uh, instantaneous rate of change, okay? So I'm going to use this uh, function again as an example, and I don't know how that function is being used in practice. It's probably not being used in practice in any way at all. I just made it up, okay? X cubed minus 5X, okay? And definitely not a straight line, right? Okay? So when we make a graph of that curve, we're not going to see a straight line, all right? And let's try to find f prime of 1. So again, you, the way you read that off the page is not f apostrophe 1, but you read that as f prime of 1. And remember, that means the instantaneous rate of change at the input 1. It's not the same. I don't think it's the same. If it is, it's just coincidence. Okay. See, f prime of 1 is not the same as f of 1. Remember, f of 1 just means what's the output that matches the input 1, and this means what's the instantaneous rate of change at the input 1. So always be careful in this class when you're reading function notation to look for the apostrophe, right? If the apostrophe is there or the apostrophe is not there, those mean two vastly different things, okay? Actually, let's calculate f of 1, and I'll show you it's not, the, I hope it's not, doesn't turn out to be the same as f prime of 1, because then this is a bad example, okay? All right. Uh, but in general, these two things are not the same, okay? Uh, well, f prime of 1 is easy to calculate, right? Because that was just 1 cubed minus 5 times 1, right? See, f of 1 is easy to determine. That's just, you know, what's the output that you get when you plug 1 into the formula. So I think that's minus 4. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. So um, because uh, that's 1 cubed is 1, minus 5 is minus 4, all right? Okay, so that's all, that's all baby stuff to us now, right? Okay, uh, determining f of 1. But now finding f prime of 1, the rate of change at the input 1, that is... A much tougher thing, okay? So now to do that, we the only way we have to do that at this point, remember, is to we've got to look at the graph, okay? So here is, let me zoom out a little bit here. Um, here is the curve. Let me zoom out a little bit more, all right? So there is x cubed minus 5x, and we want to find uh, the instantaneous uh, rate of change uh, at the input 1, okay? So here is the input 1. It's halfway between 1 and 2, right? And we want to find what's the rate of change right there at uh, the input 1, okay? And so you know what this point is, right? It's 1 minus 4 because we just figured out a moment ago, right, that when x is 1, the y value is minus 4, right? Okay, so we know what the y value is here. It's minus 4, but we want to find what's the rate of change or what's the derivative at the input 1, okay? Now, first, just from looking at the graph, just from looking at the graph, can you tell me is that rate of change going to be positive or is it going to be negative? So just from looking at the graph, will the rate of change be positive or negative? The output is definitely negative, right? Okay, because the output is minus 4. So I know the output is negative, but what about the rate of change? Is the rate of change going to be positive or is the rate of change going to be negative? Negative. negative. How do you know that, Zaman, that it's negative? Uh, why is it a negative slope? It's going down, that's right. So the curve is going down, right, okay? So, see, at the input 1, the curve is decreasing, right? At the input 1, the curve is decreasing. So that tells us immediately that we're going to have a negative slope there at the input 1, okay? So uh, maybe that slope could turn out to be minus 4, all right? And maybe I do have a bad example, you see, okay? But not sure of that yet. We'll uh, check that a little bit more uh, closely now here, right? So, but I do, let, let me go back to the notes here temporarily. OK, so I do know that already Zaman is correct. This is negative. OK, F prime of one is negative. It's less than zero. And the reason I know that I don't know exactly how much less than zero it is. But the reason I know that is because I can see that the curve is decreasing 
right there at one. Okay. All right. Now, now let's try to get a a really accurate estimate for as best we can get for f prime of one. So, what's our trick? What's our game that we're going to play here? In 25 words or less, what do we do here uh, with the curve? So we've got the curve here all nice and graphed. What are we going to do with it? What? Yeah, you're going to zoom it in until you see what? Until you see a straight line, right? So we're going to zoom in until it looks like a straight line. We know it's really not a straight line, okay? But we're going to zoom in until it looks like a straight line to us. And then we're going to calculate the slope of that straight line. And the slope of that straight line will be uh, 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 our instantaneous rate of change. That will be the slope of the curve at the input one. Now, make sure that you don't zoom in on this piece, right, or this piece, right? You want to zoom in on this piece, right, okay, right here at the input one, okay, because that's where you're uh, trying to determine uh, the slope. So if you've got a graphing calculator, you really need a graphing calculator here, right, okay, or you can use des Desmos, right, okay, so we'll just zoom in there right at the input one so i'm zooming in okay so see there's one minus four right there's my point that i want to zoom in on i haven't quite zoomed in enough yet right because that still looks clearly like a curve right so i'm going to keep on zooming in we'll have to move our graphing window around here to make sure that um, we keep the point one minus four right there in the picture does that look like a straight line to y'all pretty darn close right let me zoom in just a little bit more and let me try one more okay and now i to the naked eye right i cannot tell that that is not a straight line i know in my head it's not a straight line right okay but this little piece of the curve uh, 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 is so close to a straight line that i cannot distinguish it from a straight line right okay and now i just calculate the slope of uh, this line, correct? All right, that's all I have to do is calculate the slope of that line. And the slope of that line, I can use any two points on that line, right? Okay, that quote unquote line, right? Uh, it's not really a line, but I can use any two points on that line, right, to calculate the slope. And why can I do that? Because slopes of lines are what? They're what? Steady, perfect, right, yeah, okay. Slopes of lines are steady. So I can pick any two points that I want. You can pick two points. You can pick a different two points. Uh, 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 Fergie there can pick another two points, right, okay. And you all all come up with the same value because slopes of lines are steady, right, okay. So I will pick this point because I know exactly what that point is. That was 1 minus 4, right, okay. And then let's pick another point, maybe this point right here. What does that look like? That looks like 0.995 and minus 3.99, right? Okay. <clears throat> did y'all write that down for me? What did I say? 0.995 and minus 3.99, okay? All right, so let's go back here to the notes and um, let's calculate that slope. So that is the, whatever slope we get there is going to be, our estimate for the instantaneous rate of change. Sometimes when I put an equal mark with a little squiggly there, that means approximately, because I'm not quite certain that I've exactly nailed down the instantaneous rate of change, but I've got a good estimate for it, right? So let's see, we said, okay, the two points we're gonna use to do this were one and minus four, right? And then, uh, what was it? 0.99 and something? 0.995, messed that up already, see? Okay, it's a good thing y'all are here. 0 0.995 and minus 3.99, okay? So we'll just calculate the slope between those two points, right? Using our slope formula, correct? Okay, so take the difference in the, take the difference in the y coordinates there. So I'm gonna do minus four minus that minus 3.99, or you could do minus 3.99 minus 4, it doesn't matter, okay? And then uh, let's take the difference in the x-coordinate. So it's 0.995, oops, I'm doing that in the wrong order, right? Make sure you do the subtraction in the denominator the same as you do it in the numerator. So I started with minus 4 in the top, so I need to start with 1 in the bottom and then minus the 0 0.995. And so I get, let's see, minus 4 plus 
3.99 divided by, and this is 0 0.005, okay? So that looks like minus 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.005, and I think I can do that even without a calculator because I think that's minus 2. Is that correct? Yeah, okay? So... Um, there we get it, okay? So there's our estimate, just our estimate for the slope of that curve at uh, uh, the input 1 or f prime of 1 or the rate of change at the input 1 or the derivative at 1. Our, all those terms are interchangeable. Uh, we get there minus 2, see? So minus 2, not the same as minus 4, right? See, I was saying those two values are uh, different. In fact, they can be completely different. And they don't even have to be the same sign, okay? They don't even have to have the same sign there, all right? So, uh, so don't expect uh, f of 1 and f prime of 1 to be in any way related to each other, okay? <laughs> uh, two totally different um, ideas. All right, so, uh, so this is not so hard uh, 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 to uh, estimate these instantaneous rates of change, but, of course, the issue is here you've got to have the the technology, right? So you've got to have a graphing calculator. You've got to have a computer available to you so you can zoom in on the curve, okay? If you don't have that available to you, then obviously this system is you know, not going to work, right? Okay? So we have to develop uh, some way of doing this without, you know, having to have a graphing calculator or a computer. Obviously, when um, uh, calculus was being invented by um, in the uh, uh, 1600s, right, they didn't have any uh, concept of, you know, uh, uh, computing devices. Well, they had a little bit of concept of computing devices, right? But uh, uh, n nothing like a graphing computing device, right? So, uh, uh, you know, how were they thinking of calculating rates of change um, uh, when, the con when the idea was first developed? All right. Now I'm going to give you all a little uh, quiz here. Okay. All right. So I've got a graph of a function named f. So uh, our favorite function name there, we'll just call this f. So a pretty nice, simple graph, okay? And um, I'm going to ask you some questions here about f, okay? And these are just true-false questions, all right? So your favorite type of test. Y'all like true-false tests? I never like those, but... Um, so these are just true-false questions, okay? All right. So, uh, so I've just written down an expression which, which is either true or false, all right, and um, just want us to answer, okay? So first one there, f, just plain f, of minus 2 greater than 0. Is that true? So is f of minus 2 greater than 0? So look at the graph there. How do we answer that? Pretty easy to answer, right? Okay. What would y'all say? False, right, yeah, that is false. So that one's easy to answer, right, because there is the input minus 2, correct? There is the input minus 2, and you find the matching output, and you don't have to calculate it exactly, right? But if you, you can see, right, that that matching output is going to be negative, correct? Okay, so uh, it's not bigger than 0, it's negative, so we know this is false. What about f of 3? Is f of 3 greater than 0? So is that true or false? Uh, there is 3, I think, right? f of 3, yeah, I don't know exactly how much that is, but that is definitely greater than 0, right? Okay, so that is true, okay? What about f of 5? I've got the graph repeated here, but we may have to scroll back up. What about f of 5? Is that greater than 0 or not? f of 5. Hmm. Undefined, yeah, okay. That was a trick question, <laughs> all right, okay. That was a dirty trick question because notice where does the domain stop here? Somewhere around 4, right, okay? The domain stops because I've got that dot there, so that means the, the curve stops there and 5 on the x-axis is somewhere over here, so that means f of 5 is... Um, not defined, okay? So, um, so that was a...
trick question. So I guess the right way to answer this is false because um, it's not greater than zero, right? It's undefined, okay? So I can't say it's bigger than uh, zero because I don't know what it is, all right? Um, okay. <clears throat> so I repeated the curve here so it wouldn't have to be scrolling around so much, all right? What about the average rate of change, average now, not instantaneous, but average rate of change from x equal minus 2 to x equals 0. Is that greater than 0 or not? Okay. So all of these are set up as greater than 0. So is this average rate of change greater than 0 or isn't it? So how can you eyeball that from the graph? Remember, the average rate of change corresponds to the slope of what sort of line? Begins with an S. Do you remember that? Yeah, so the average rate of change from minus 2 to 0 is the same as the slope of what line? It's the line that connects these. It's the slope of the line that connects these two points on the curve. There's the, there's the point that corresponds to minus 2, and there's the point that corresponds to 0. That's 0 on the x-axis, right? Okay. And the slope of the line that connects these two points is that average rate of change. Ooh, I drew a really ugly line there. Let me try that again. Okay, I was trying to draw a straight line connecting those two points. Let's see if I can do it better. Well, that's not too much better. But anyway, imagine that's a straight line. Okay, so you've got a straight line connecting these two points. That's what that average rate of change would be. It would be the slope of the line connecting these two points on the curve. Well, is that slope going to be negative or positive? Negative, negative right, because obviously that line is going downhill, right? Okay, so is this true or false? False, yeah, okay. So that one uh, is going to be false. What about the average rate of change from 1 to 3? Let's see. So here is 1, right? There's the point that corresponds to the input 1. Here is the point that corresponds to the input 3. So if you draw the straight line, this is not a straight The curve is not a straight line that connects these two points, right? But if you draw the straight line that connects these two points, well, again, imagine that's a straight line connecting those two points. Okay. Does that line have positive slope or negative slope? Yeah, that one's obviously positive, right? Going uphill from left to right, okay? So this is true, correct? Okay. That average rate of change, if we were to calculate it, we know it would come out to be positive, okay? Because it would be the same as the slope of this line. Again, what do you call that line that connects two points on a curve? Secant, got it, perfect. I love that, okay? So that is the secant line, right? Yeah, remember, these are called secant lines, okay? So if you have a curve and, you know, you just connect two points on the curve, that line that connects those two points is called a secant line, all right? Okay, now here's where we get into not the output that matches an input, but the rate of change at a particular input. So what about the rate of change at negative 3? So we can't zoom in on this curve, okay, because I don't know the formula for this curve. So I cannot uh, 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 zoom in very easily on this curve, okay, but that's okay. I don't have to exactly calculate the instantaneous rate of change, right? I just have to decide if it's positive or negative. So at the input 3, is that rate of change positive or negative? Negative, negative right. Because at the input minus 3, there's the input minus 3, what's happening to the graph? It's going down. That's right. It's going down. Okay. So we know if we were able to zoom in on this little tiny piece of the curve, it would, it would look like a straight line, right, okay, but it would be a line with negative slope, okay, and so if we were able to calculate this value exactly, it would be negative, it wouldn't be bigger than zero, okay, so this one is false. What about f prime of 2, f prime of 2, so what about the rate of change at uh, 2? Let me erase that. Um, let me erase that secant line right here. So what about at the input 2? Here's the input 2. 
So is the slope going to be of that curve going to be positive or negative? Positive, right, because right there we can see that the curve is going up, right? Okay, so if we were able to zoom in on that little piece of the curve, we know we would see a line with positive slope. So this is true. What about f? So this is another trick question. What about f prime of 0? f prime of 0. So what about the rate of change right at 0? Oh, so if you zoom in on this right there, this little piece of the curve, what's that line going to look like when you zoom in on this little piece? It's going to be, yeah, well, a lines are straight, right? Okay, yeah, but yeah, what'd you call it? Back, uh, not, yeah, a constant or a horizontal line, right? Yeah, think about this little piece. If we zoom in on this piece, see, that's where there's a turning point right here on the curve, right? And if you zoom in close enough to this little piece, you're going to get what appears to be just a flat line, right? Okay, a horizontal line. And what's the slope of horizontal lines? Zero, right. Slope of horizontal lines is zero, okay? Slope of vertical lines is undefined, okay? But slope of horizontal lines is zero. And so, is this true? Yeah, not quite, yeah, okay? Uh, it's not greater than zero. It, it looks like it's exactly equal to zero, right, okay? The rate of change at zero is exactly equal to zero. So, uh, again, that's why I said this is a little bit of a trick question. That one is false, okay? Not greater than zero, but um, exactly equal to zero. That is an interesting clue about turning points, okay? At turning points... See, turning points, right, the rate of change is zero, okay? The rate of change is zero. And that's going to be a very important clue to help us find turning points without having to visually find them, okay? We will know, oh, when I'm, when I'm looking for a turning point, I'm looking for some place where the rate of change is zero, okay? That's where the curve is going to be. If we zoom in close enough, that's where the curve is going to be flat, Okay, so that one is false. All right. Okay, so... Um, all right, so we've got an, a, a method now for... Uh, we've got a method now for estimating um, instantaneous rates of change. We have sort of an idea or an intuition of what an instantaneous rate of change is for a curve, okay? But our method is a little bit clumsy because it requires, uh, you know, uh, this ability to zoom in on the graph of the function. And that's just not always going to be feasible. All right. So so what we have to do now is uh, uh, is develop a way of estimating the instantaneous rate of change or determining the instantaneous rate of change where we don't have to zoom in on the graph. OK. All right. So that's the idea now that. Um, we're going to start developing right now. And it turns out to be um, a pretty simple idea, actually. Okay? All right. So um, I'm going to make a new definition now. Well, one of these definitions is already familiar to you because we just got through talking about it. All right? So if you have a function, okay, and suppose you've got a couple of inputs there to the function, A and B. So A and B are numbers here. All right? Then again, uh, the secant line is the line that connects these two points on the graph, okay? So if you look at the point on the graph that corresponds to the input A and the, cor and the point on the graph that corresponds to the input B, that would have these coordinates, A, F of A, and B, F of B. If you connect those two uh, 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 points uh, with a straight line, you get what's called a secant line, okay? And you know, of course, that slope of secant line, uh, uh, that's the same as average rate of change. However, if you take the graph, same function now, if you take the graph at one of those inputs, okay, and you draw a line that touches the graph right at that input, but doesn't uh, 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 cross the graph, uh, uh, doesn't touch the graph in another point, that's called a tangent line, okay? So we have secant line connects two points on a graph, a tangent line on the other hand, just touches the, a, a point on a graph at just one place. Okay, uh, let me illustrate the um, let me illustrate uh, the difference. 
So here's a picture where I've drawn both a, um, a secant line and a tangent line. Okay, so I just made up some, you know, curve here. So uh, suppose this is just a function called f, right? And here's the input a, and here's the input b, all right? So of course there's the the point that corresponds to the input a, and there's the point that corresponds to the input b on this particular curve, right? I just chose a and b at random here. There's nothing special about where I located a and b, all right? So again, if you connect those two points on the curve, right, you get what's called a secant line. So the green line here. Y'all can barely see that's green. The green line here is a secant line, right? It connects two points on the connects two points on the curve. But on the other hand, if you draw a, a a line, okay, at either this point or you can also draw it at this point, okay. I just happen to draw it at the first point, okay. If you draw a line that just touches the graph right at this point, but doesn't cross the graph again. Okay, that is called a tangent line. Okay, that's called a tangent line. So notice the tangent line just nicks the it just nicks the curve right here at this point, and then doesn't cross uh, the uh, uh, graph again. Okay, that's referred to as a tangent line. Now look, you might say, Dr. Waller, what you just said is wrong. You said the tangent line touches the curve at one point, but it doesn't touch the curve again. Uh, but that's not true in your picture because obviously way over here on the uh, on the far right, what's going to happen? The tangent line is going to cross that curve again, right? Okay, because the tangent line continues and the curve continues. So somewhere outside of this picture, it is true the tangent line will cross the curve again. Okay, but what we mean is uh, 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 when we say a tangent line uh, 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 just touches a curve in one point. We mean close to the point. Close to the point, the tangent line only touches the curve in just one point. Okay? So, the, so I don't know how to describe it physically other than to say the tangent line kind of just barely nicks the graph, just barely grazes the graph right at this point. It does cross this point, but it won't uh, across the curve again close to that point maybe way off on the far left or uh, uh, maybe way off on the far right it will cross the curve again okay but close to this point the tangent line only touches the curve in just that single point okay that's called a tangent line right now um, that seems like a very simple idea right but uh, 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 the first time you're asked to draw tangent lines, which is what we're going to be doing here uh, uh, in, in the class, is drawing some tangent lines, uh, sometimes you, you will muddy, muddle that up the first couple of times. Okay, uh, You try drawing a tangent line. So here's a curve. No, no, it's not the same curve I had before. Okay, And I have plotted um, five points on this curve. Okay, so one point called A, one point called B, one here C, one point D, and one point E. And um, what I want to know is um, which of these are proper tangent lines that I have drawn. Okay, so which of these are proper tangent lines? Is that a tangent line? Yeah, so, is, is, so is it, the answer is just true or false. Is the line that I have drawn at A... Is that really what I'm thinking of as a tangent line? And the answer is no. Okay. All right. That is not the tangent line at the input A. All right. So this is the answer here is false. I haven't drawn at A. I haven't drawn a proper tangent line. What should the tangent line really look like here? If I ask you to draw a tangent line at that point, what would the tangent line really look like there? Yeah, what you should really draw is something like, see, something like this. Okay. Normally, you don't want tangent lines to cut through the graph. Okay. You don't want tangent lines to cut through the graph. All right. You want the tangent line just to touch the graph at the particular point, but you don't want it to slice through uh, the graph. There are some exceptions to that, though. There are some exceptions to that. Okay, but in general, tangent lines will just touch the graph at a point, but the graph will stay above or below the tangent line. You don't want 
uh, uh, the tangent line to cut through the graph. Here is the, well, here is an exception, okay? Because this is a proper tangent line, okay? There, that is a proper tangent line. So there, if you try drawing uh, 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 that uh, line there that just touches the graph at this point, there's no way you can avoid the uh, tangent line cutting through the graph, okay? So uh, uh, another way to think of tangent lines is, and this is a really important observation, the tangent line is a line, but the tangent line kind of looks like the graph close to the point, okay? It looks like the graph close to the point, okay? So uh, that, that tangent line, uh, that line that I drew at B is, a that is a proper tangent line. What about C? Do you all think I drew the proper tangent line there based on my very imprecise definition of tangent lines? Yeah, okay. See the tangent line just touches the graph right there, right at the point C, and notice the graph stays very nicely below the tangent line, right? Okay, so that's very clearly an example of a tangent line, okay? What about at D? Think I got the tangent line drawn right there? I think so, yeah, okay. That horizontal line just touches uh, uh, the graph right there at the point D, okay? And notice the curve stays very nicely above uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the tangent line, okay? So I would say, yeah, I did uh, draw a proper tangent line at uh, D. What about E? So I drew a line there. You think that what I meant by the tangent line, though? No. No. Okay. No. Uh, if uh, yeah, that one is. That one's clearly not the idea that I was trying to get across when I was talking about tangent lines. The tangent line right here at E should look something like this. Okay. I think at E you can draw the line so that you can keep the curve to the, in this case, to the left of the tangent line. So you could draw a straight line that touches right here at E, but you could keep the curve to the, totally to the left of the tangent line. Uh, you wouldn't have to draw a line that cuts through uh, the graph. Okay, so uh, that line drawn at E, not a good uh, tangent line. <clears throat> Now here's what we're getting at. The, uh, our, here, here's our fact about uh, the, uh, our important facts about tangent lines. Uh, uh, this is why we're introducing the notion of tangent lines. Okay? It turns out that the tangent line that you draw at a point, that is the line that you're going to see when you zoom in on the point. Okay? The tangent line. When you zoom in on a, a curve, right, until it looks like a straight line, that line that you're seeing, or you appear to be seeing, when you zoom in at the point, that really is the same as the tangent line, okay? So uh, if you have a function, okay, and you've drawn a tangent line at a particular point, okay, then when you start zooming in on that curve right there at that point, the tangent line and the graph will become progressively more identical to one another, okay? At some point, you won't be able to distinguish the tangent line from the graph, okay? okay? So the tangent line really is the line you see when you zoom in on a, uh, a curve at a particular point, okay? So that, that uh, observation A there, that fact about tangent lines is really... Uh, the key uh, observation that I'm getting at. Here's a couple of others, though, that are useful to us. Okay, um, A tangent line does not exist. Sometimes you don't have tangent lines. Okay, Sometimes you won't be able to draw tangent lines at particular points if, okay, well, if the graph doesn't exist at a point, you cannot uh, draw a tangent line there. 
Okay, all right. So um, uh, if you if you have an input that's not in the domain of a function, you can't draw a tangent line there, obviously. Okay, all right. If the graph is not a smooth, continuous curve, okay. So if you are trying to draw a tangent line uh, to a graph at a particular point where the graph is not a smooth, continuous, I mean connected graph, you're not going to be able to draw the tangent line there. Okay, so the tangent line won't exist. All right. By the way, when the tangent line doesn't exist, we say that the function is not, and there's a 25 cent word for you. We say the function is not differentiable. There's a college word for you. Okay, we say the function is not differentiable at that input. Okay, <clears throat> that's how you pronounce that. Differentiable. Ball. All right. Okay. So no tangent line means the function not differentiable at that input. And finally, the last thing here. Well, you can already guess this one. The slope of the tangent line and the instantaneous rate of change are the same thing. Okay. The slope of the tangent line and the instantaneous rate of change, those are the same value. Okay. Because why is that? Well, what did I just say? When you zoom in on a point till the graph looks like a straight line, what you're really looking at is the tangent line, okay? And of course, uh, 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 the uh, slope of the line that you see is the instantaneous rate of change. That's going to be the same as the slope of the tangent line, okay? So slope of the tangent line and the instantaneous rate of change at a particular input, those are the same value, okay? Wow, those three observations, that is kind of calculus in a nutshell there. There's one page. So if your parent asks you, what are you learning in calculus? You can just show them this page, okay? Because that is the secret to calculus right there, all right? That is exactly what Isaac Newton was thinking about when he invented calculus, all right? Actually... Um, not to diss Isaac Newton at all, but it was actually Newton's teacher, who was also named Isaac, by the way, um, but not Newton, uh, who actually uh, uh, made this observation. Okay, <clears throat> and then Newton learned about that from his teacher uh, at Cambridge uh, in England, and then there was a plague. Um, this was during the years of bubonic plague, and there was a plague, and, and Newton had to go home from college and spend a year at home because otherwise he would have caught the plague. So he went home for a year and thought about what his teacher had taught him, okay? And that's when he sort of formalized the ideas of calculus, okay? I won't tell you how old Newton was at the time, but he was in college, okay? So but don't get disappointed by that, all right? <clears throat> um, okay. All right, so let me let me illustrate this for you uh, with an example, okay? So I'm going to make a graph of this function, x squared minus 5x, um, and I'm going to graph the tangent line on the same graph, okay? And uh, I want to show you that when you start zooming in on the graph, uh, the graph and the tangent line start looking identical. You won't be able to distinguish uh, the two, okay? So let's go back to Desmos here. I think I've already got this graph created, so... Um, Okay, decimals cooperate with me here. Okay, we froze it there. Come back, Google. I may have to, uh, is it doing something? We may have lost our, ah, there we go. All right, at last, okay. Well, I thought I could get it here.
Ah, at last. Okay. All right. So there is uh, x squared minus 5x. Okay. There is x squared minus 5x. And what I did is I drew the tangent line right at the input 2. Okay. So there is the uh, there's x squared minus 5x there drawn in blue. And right there at the input 2 is the tangent line. Okay. So I don't think anybody would um, dispute that. That's a proper tangent line there, right at the input uh, uh, two, correct? Okay. See, the tangent line touches the curve right there at the input two, and uh, but the curve there otherwise stays completely above uh, the tangent line. Okay. All right. So let's start zooming in there, right at uh, uh, right around the input two, and you're going to start seeing that if I zoom in close enough. So it takes a little while there. We've got to keep two in our picture. All right. But if I zoom in close enough, at some point, you cannot any longer distinguish the tangent line from the curve. Ah, there it is, right? Can you all tell the difference between the tangent line and the curve, right? Okay. They're exactly uh, overlapping each other, you see. Okay. So, uh, and that's what tangent lines are, okay? When you zoom in at a particular point, okay, uh, 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 on a graph, okay, uh, the tangent line and the graph there become uh, just nearly identical to one another, all right? Okay, so I've really got two graphs drawn here, but you cannot see them both because they're overlapping each other so closely. I've zoomed in uh, so close that you can't distinguish the curve uh, from the tangent line okay all right now <clears throat> so how is this now going to um, how is this now going to make our life easier in estimating instantaneous rates of change because that's what we want to do here the point is not really to draw tangent lines okay or to find out about tangent lines what we really want to do is to uh, 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 determine uh, estimate instantaneous rates of change okay so how is this observation about tangent lines going to help us with that process? Okay, well, we're just going to get to that, okay? But before we do that, though, I've, it's an easy one for you, okay? So I've got a, a, a function here. This is kind of a, a, a complicated graph, okay, because I've kind of uh, rigged it uh, uh, specially for this purpose, okay? So what I want to know here is for this particular function, f, okay, with this crazy graph, where is it not differentiable? For what values of x is it not differentiable? Or in other words, for what values of x can you not draw the tangent line? Okay. For what values of x can you not, not can, but for what values of x can you not draw the tangent line? Okay. Can you all see that? Okay. So tell me that. Where, for what values of x, just write it down, not differentiable, Okay, or no tangent line at what inputs there? Okay, all right, so I'll write that down and you can share with your neighbor there. Okay, and be sure now that you can give me a little explanation though, okay, for why you picked a um, uh, particular value of x where it's not going to be differentiable, okay? So not differentiable means the tangent line does not exist. The tangent line does not exist, okay? So actually, for most values of x, the tangent line does exist, all right, in this picture, but for some, it doesn't, okay? And where does it not? Want me to zoom in on that a little bit? Is that better? So you just have to give me the value of x. You don't have to give me the y value, okay? I only care about the x coordinate, all right? So for what x coordinate is it not going to be differentiable? And, and then you have to give me some explanation for y, because on the test I will say y, okay?
No. No Scantron. Remember, you can bring an index card, though. Okay, remember, you can bring an index card. All right. So it can be um, um, uh, any standard size index card. All right. Uh, with whatever sort of uh, hints you want to include to yourself. Okay. All right. Oh, yes, yes. Please bring <laughs> or Definitely, please bring a calculator. Okay. You're going to need a calculator. And I, I'm not going to let you use your phone. So you definitely need to bring uh, at least a calculator for doing, uh, uh, you know, arithmetic. Right. Okay. All right, so I haven't I haven't had a chance in a while to uh, uh, pick on anybody, okay? So since it's Monday and I'm in a bad mood, let me uh, pick on someone here. So Eduardo, okay? Eduardo, is Eduardo here? Eduardo, you just have to give me one value for x where the tangent line is not going to exist, okay? At negative four, okay? I would say that is exactly correct, all right? But now that's the easy part of the question, Eduardo for which you get half credit, okay? So not differentiable at x equal minus 4, but, Eduardo, how would you explain to me why it's not differentiable at minus 4? The point's not included. The point's not included, that's right. Uh, the, the, uh, the, cor the actual mathematically, technically correct way of saying that is f of minus 4 does not exist. f of minus 4 does not exist. OK, so um, uh, because that point was excluded from the graph, you really cannot calculate f of minus four. Right. Um, and so um, a, a minus four not in the domain of this function. Right. And so numbers that are not in the domain of a function, you definitely cannot draw a tangent line there. OK, definitely cannot draw a tangent line. OK, perfect. All right. Um, uh, uh, is it Mr. Bay? Who's, where's B-A-I? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ms. Bay. All right. Okay. Um, second, uh, second value for X there. Positive two. Positive two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, perfect. Right. Not differentiable at uh, positive two. How do you say your first name, by the way? It's, it's okay. Shui? Shui. Okay. All right, so I may stick with your second name, but so x equals two, right? Okay, shui, not uh, a differentiable at x equals two. I mean, uh, and so uh, why would so if you were asked to explain that, what would you say? Uh, no, okay. So you're saying it's really not a function because there are two y values for that x value. Not quite, okay. Um, that's an easy uh, confusion, but actually uh, there's not two um, uh, uh, there's not two outputs here. Um, f of two uh, is actually equal to one. It's this is the proper output, okay. It's not this value right? because we have an open circle here. OK, so um, uh, see what Eduardo said was f of minus four uh, doesn't exist. OK, and he was correct. OK, but um, um, actually f of two does exist. F of two does exist and the output is one. So not, not, not the same reason that Eduardo gave. OK, uh, but it, you're right. There's no tangent line here. And the reason there's no tangent line is because there's a break in the graph right there. There's a break in the graph. To have a tangent line, you must have a smooth, smooth, continuous. That means connected. You've got to have a smooth, connected curve. So right there at 2, the curve is not connected, not connected. So that's why you don't have a tangent line, OK? That's why you don't have a tangent line. OK, so that's that's uh, 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 the second reason where a tangent line won't happen. The graph isn't connected there. So if you have any breaks in the graph, you cannot have a tangent line there. All right. OK. And finally, Erica, Erica Rinden. All right. OK, so what's the last? There's one other X value where it's not differentiable. What's the last one? Uh, 
Where's the one other kind of weird looking point on this graph? Six, yeah, right, okay, yeah, <laughs> right there at six, okay. Not gonna be differentiable there, okay. Erica, do you know why not differentiable there? Think about what I told to Shui. It's got to be, it's connected, but it's not, what else did, uh, it, it's not, I, I said, Shui, what did I, I tell you? I said it had to be, Smooth, yeah, has to be smooth, okay, has to be smooth. It cannot have a sharp corner point. If it has a sharp corner point, does not have a tangent line, okay? So you see that comes to an, a, a, a sharp point there at uh, 6, and so that keeps it from having a tangent line. See, the problem there is if you try to draw a tangent line, there are lots of different ways of drawing the tangent line. Because you have that sharp point there, you can draw tangent lines all sorts of different ways, okay, right there, and that's, as, uh, that's bad, all right? So anytime you have a sharp point uh, uh, on a graph, not going to have a tangent line there. See, no matter how far you zoom in on this graph, no matter how far you zoom in on this graph, never going to look like a straight line because it's got that sharp point, okay? So it's never going to look like a straight line. Okay, so um, uh, at six, all right. So y'all see that not differentiable, no tangent line, those three places. But if it's smooth and continuous, okay, then gonna have a tangent line. Okay. All right. Now, how are we going to exploit uh, this? Um, how are we gonna exploit this idea now? All right, of uh, 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 tangent lines to help us with instantaneous rates of change, okay? All right, so do y'all have this sheet? Okay, shall I bring that back with you? All right. We've got just enough time now to finish this. Well, see, think about what I told you now here, right? The tangent line is the line you're gonna see when you zoom in on a graph, right? So guess what? Now you don't have to zoom in on a graph, right, to uh, see what the graph is going to look like when you zoom in it. All you have to be able to do is do what? Draw the tangent line, you see. If you can draw the tangent line, then you know what the graph is going to look like, okay, when you zoom in on it, all right? So let's look at that problem number two, okay, on this sheet. Uh, uh, John will give you a sheet if you didn't. Uh, 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 if you don't have one, okay? So we're looking at the second page. We finished the first page already. Let me see if I can get the... Dot cam to focus here. Ah, there we go. All right. So we're not going to do all parts of this because we don't have quite time to do all parts of this for the end of the class, all right? But it says that here we have a function graphed. It's nice and smooth, right? Okay. Um, graphed here. This depicts the average college student debt. So this is a little bit depressing. But remember, this is, this is for all students uh, in the United States. So this includes at very expensive schools. Okay. So the average college student debt at graduation, this is from 2002 to 2012. Okay. The output is measured in thousands of dollars. So the y values there are in thousands of dollars. And then this is elapsed time. The x is elapsed time. So it, the x equal 2 is uh, 2000 and what did I say? 2. Okay. And then up to the 12 is uh, the last point here on the graph is x equal 12. That corresponds to 2012. All right. So the first two questions here are easy questions. These are just evaluating the function. That's not really calculus questions. Let's look at starting at point C, uh, starting at part C, okay? So it says sketch the tangent line, sketch the tangent line to the graph at x equals 10. So I want you to do the best you can, sketch me what you think is the tangent line at x equals 10, okay? So you're gonna do this by hand. You're gonna eyeball it. So different people might get slightly different uh, answers here, might draw slightly different lines, but most people will be the same. There's x equals 10, so I want you to draw me that tangent line. Draw it, uh, draw a nice long tangent line now. So try to draw it all the way across the graph. 
Okay? And then I want you to estimate the slope of that tangent line. Estimate the slope of that tangent line. So to estimate the slope of that tangent line, you're going to have to pick two points off of the tangent line. So I've got a grid drawn there. So try picking two points off of the tangent line. Okay? And while y'all are doing it, I will also do it out of the picture here and see how well I do. <clears throat> I don't know what the answer is supposed to be, so... So draw that tangent line, okay, and then pick two points, and you can use any two points you like, remember, any two points you like that you can find on that tangent line, and try then to calculate the slope of that tangent line. Make sure now you pick points on the tangent line. They may not necessarily be on the curve, right? You got something drawn there? I'll give you all another minute. So draw something on your paper. Draw something on your paper. And then do part D. See if you can estimate the slope of that tangent line that you've drawn. Okay, I'm going to pick someone, and, uh, and but I'm going to make you come up here and show us your tangent line, okay? So is Al Alan Hernandez, Alan Hernandez, is he here? All right, Alan. Alan looks very confident as he comes up. So he's going to show us his tangent line, and let's see if we like his tangent line there. Ah, uh, there's Alan's tangent line. How do you all like that? Tangent line? Y'all vote for the, in favor of Alan's tangent line? Okay, so clap for Alan or something if you like his tangent line. Yeah, I think Alan drew a pretty good tangent line there. Okay, right? So there's your tangent line. But Alan, you didn't write down the slope for me. Okay? No. So, oh, okay. So we have to. So, all right, so Alan's now, he's really on the spot. Okay? All right. So, Alan, now you've got to uh, estimate the slope of that uh, tangent line. So I'm going to let you write there, okay, for us. Okay. Right. Okay. On your paper. All right. Oh, okay. All right. So you're going to write on your paper there for us because so y'all tell Ellen what he needs to do. Oh, he's already started it. What does he have to do? He has to do what? What are the steps? Uh, pick two points, right? Okay. So Alan, you said one point is 10, 25. That's pretty obvious because that is uh, uh, the point, uh, you know, 10, right? At the input 10. That was pretty clear. And then you said a second you thought is what? Show that to us. Show it to us. Five and 
5 and 19. Oh, okay, so out, uh, yeah, there's the little mistake that you made there because you picked, I, I think, uh, you plotted a point on the graph, okay? Yeah, but we want a point on the tangent line, okay? See, it's got to be on the tangent oh, line now. On the line, that's right, okay? So can you find a point on the line? How about right, you, let's, what's the obvious one? Maybe right there, is that one sort of clear? Is that? What is that? Six and... Is that on the is that on the line? Sort of. Okay. All right. So estimate the uh, coordinates of that point. So you're thinking what? Uh, seven point five and twenty-two. Okay. So seven point five and twenty-two. All right. Okay. Seven, so seven point five and twenty-two is the second point. So show that to us. Oh, is that okay? So seven point five and twenty-two. All right. Ah, okay. Now, calculate the slope of that line, right? So do you remember your slope formula? Uh, yes. You take the difference in the y-coordinates, right? Yeah. And divide by the difference in the x-coordinates. So you got 25 minus 22, right? And then 10 minus 7.5. Ah, okay. So that's 3 over 2.5. What's 3 over 2.5? Can you all calculate that for 1.2? Ah, 1.2. There you go. All right. Ah, so there's Alan's estimate for a slope of the tangent line. You can fill it right in there on D there, uh, uh, Alan. Uh, 1.2. Okay. So what did y'all come up with? I came up with 1. So a lot of people came up with 1. Yeah, I came up with 1. Alan got a little bit higher than that. 1.2, which doesn't mean Alan's wrong or, or we're right or, or we're wrong and Alan's right, okay? It's just that we drew the tangent line slightly different. All right, what's the answer to the last question, Alan? Now that you've got the 1.2, what's the instantaneous rate of change at the input 10? That's easy. 1.2, that's right, okay? So now you can fill that in. It's 1.2. Perfect, okay? Ah, so that's, what, that's how we're going to use tangent line, see? So we don't have to zoom in on graphs any longer, okay? Great. <clears throat> no, I don't. So I'm usually in my office till about uh, 9.30. And then I come over here.